the breath. What you want is the range. And that's what I was getting at with this, is that if, when it becomes mechanical, that's when it just becomes unnecessarily loud. It's just going in and coming out. And, and you can, you're not, the, the loop that you want to create between listening and opening up the space within and the, and the sound and what is the quality of the sound, that whole loop that of, of awareness and of adjustment based on what you are aware of, then that's lost somehow. And so, and it can, but it can be lost in both directions. It can be lost by being too forceful, too loud, just sort of shutting, almost shutting yourself out. Like if you were to stop all of a sudden and listen, you'd go, oh my God, I'm not paying attention at all. That's, because that sound is not inviting me in, it's blocking me out, actually. And then the, uh, the reverse, though, can happen too, where you're so quiet that the breath is barely even moving, and so there's there's no churning, there's not really a, an energetic uh, thing happening, uh, a <coughs> spark, you know. And so, and it, because you don't want to be inhibited, and that can happen that a kind of shyness or a in, inhibitedness. Fearfulness to be, make any noise, or you know that kind of feeling you don't want either. So you have to find the, that range of, and that's what I'm saying too. Is with the medium breath, it's a varying breath. Sometimes it has more force because it's requiring it, or or that's what you are intending and listening to and, and going into. And then other times it's so fine that you barely hear it, or it's even unregulated because that's what belongs. And so it's, it's very changeable in that. And, um, and that is not easy to do. Because, for, for instance, the piston-like loud breathing, it gives you something. It gives you kind of flow and heat and purpose. And, that, that, and in a way, right? That, so there's a reasoning for it. But it can come around and bite you and be like, make you, like I said, shut you out and whatnot. And so, but because then the opposite is you're not really using breath and um, then that, you don't get the benefits of the rhythm and the, uh, that following of the patterns to the ends and really illuminating the, those patterns that arise on the breath that translate into movement. So there's to be a constant dance with it and being with it. I know, I feel like like that video post was really good. Like I think that a lot of people thought that, that was, there was really a lot of information, but I also feel like we, I should go back and change the title to free breathing. Like what Guruji said, you know what I mean? That he said both things, but yeah. it's more appropriate. You used the word internalize the breath, though, specifically. That yeah. was the first instruction you gave me in July. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Internalize yeah. the breath. So this is what you were saying. Yeah. The internalization is to understand and be aware of it all. Yeah. And, uh, and that takes a conscious intention. Like that's what I was... It's just, it's just, it's just, I was thinking that. Yeah. That in the garden of Vedasana, right there at that moment, there's so much out. And then I was telling you to just get your drishti in. And if you're really with it and in, you'll, you'll find the exact right sound. When you told me that, that I wasn't struggling, and that was like, oh, yeah, I'm not. Yeah. Right, like half the time it's like you're you're acting like you're in Kapotasana, <laughs> but you're like reaching up into a cup. You know that doesn't require that amount of force or strain. And that helped me with the rest of my practice. Oh, good, yeah. It helped me be more aware of it. Yeah.